Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. In the early 90s I played bass guitar in quite a few different hard rock bands and most of the guitar players at the time were using rack mount preamps, the Marshall JMP1 and the ADA MP1 and there was a lot of heated discussion about which was best. Now recently Numbrini have released emulations of both of those preamps so I thought let's do a video where we have a listen to both, we'll check out some sounds and we'll check out how they work. It's not a shootout, it's a friendly comparison. Okay, no more piss panting about, volume. When I first started working on this track, I had this idea in mind for a huge, heavy, nasty, monstrous guitar sound. And I tried a few amp sims, but nothing worked. Everything I did sucked. I just couldn't come up with that mean sound that also cut through the mix. So I had the face on. And later on I put some music on, and I put some White Lion on. I still love White Lion. And when I heard Vito's guitar sound, I thought, that's it. That sound is somehow sharper and clearer. That'll cut through the mix. And I know Vito used the ADA, so that inspired me to try the MP1 on this track. And I thought, you know what I'll do is on the other guitar part, on the other rhythm part, I'm gonna try the JMP, and then I'll do a lead with one of them, and I'll do a harmony to the lead with the other. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. Check this out. <laughs> In the late 80s, early 90s, the ADA MP1 was famously used and popularised by guitar heroes of the time like Nuno Betancourt, Paul Gilbert, Vito Bratta, Marty Friedman, Dave Sabo and Scotty Hill, Kirk Hammett and Jason Becker. The JMP1 was famously used by Vivian Campbell and Phil Collin, Dave Mustaine, Glenn Tipton, KK Downing, Dave Murray, Yannick Gers and Adrian Smith and some of these players still use these legendary preamps to this day. The originals were both one unit rack mount preamps, so as far as emulations of the original hardware goes, that would be restricted to this section across the top. These preamps would be used in front of a power amp and guitar speaker cabinets, which would be mic'd up. What Numbrini have done is to add on a choice of speaker cabinets, microphones which can be mixed, along with some room ambience. There's a power amp section, you can import your own impulse responses, and you can bypass all of that so that you can put the preamp in front of whatever guitar chain you choose. The MP1 has a tri-state voicing selection, meaning that you can choose between a clean tube sound, dirty tube, or a solid state circuit. Overdrive 1 will attenuate the pre-tube input signal. Overdrive 2 is the inter-tube level. But when choosing the solid state voicing, the Overdrive 2 control sets the level of compression. Master gain is post-tube pre-EQ. To adjust any of these controls, we press, for example, bass here, and then increase or decrease the values with these up and down buttons. The effect button is a master switch to turn on or off any active effects. To adjust an effect, click on it and the available parameters will appear here. The effects are all really good. The delay and modulations can be synced to door tempo thankfully and each effect has its own power button to the right. The one feature that really makes this unit for me though is the filter section and the same can be said for the filter section of the JMP Pro, though on that unit this feature is labelled cleaner instead of filter. Tight will reduce the low frequencies at the beginning of the signal chain tightening up the low range and leaving room for my bass guitar. Every amp should have this knob. And we have a harsh control to reduce the high frequency content. Then these two controls basically do the same job again, but at the end of the signal chain. 
On the JMP Pro, we choose between four different channels. The OD1 is your classic overdriven Marshall sound. OD2 is more modern. Very high gain is available and abundant sustain. Clean 1 will serve you well for extreme clean, whereas Clean 2 brings the jangly, glassy, Marshall clean through breakup tones. The bass shift control is simply on or off and changes the character of the low end. This will be easier to demonstrate later than to try to put into words now. To adjust any of these controls across the top, we select to move the turny knob, which I find less convenient than the MP1's up and downy knobs, but that's what you get with skeuomorphism. This is an emulation of a classic user interface, not a reimagining of one. Just like the MP1 Pro, we have a master on and off for all effects, and when we click on an effect, the parameters will appear here. Modulations and delays again will sync to door. For iOS users, what you'll get for both apps is the exact same sound that sounds every bit as good as the desktop counterpart, and whilst they may look slightly different, all the preamp features are present, including all of the effects. You also get the power amp stage. You won't be able to select individual cabinets, microphones or change mic placement, and you won't be able to mix mics. You do, however, get a long list of cabinet and mic combinations to choose from, although you won't be able to import your own impulse responses. The only feature I really miss moving from desktop to iOS is the ability to mix the mics and dial in room ambience, which sounds fabulous in both of the desktop plugins. Undoubtedly, modern iPads are easily capable of handling an exact port of the whole desktop plugin. But from experience, I'm confident in saying that very few iOS users would be prepared to pay desktop prices for an app. The compromise is a slightly cut down product for a massively cheaper price. I've had a bit of a change of heart. At this point in the video, I was going to play a bit of guitar through one of the plugins and then the same thing through the other so that you could compare. But the more that I use them, I kind of think that they both excel in slightly different ways. So I'm going to try and show that instead, rather than making it some kind of like immature, unnecessary shootout thing. All the presets that you're going to hear, by the way, are dialed in by me. They are my presets and will be available at my Patreon account for free. Sign up for Patreon, you know you want to.
And that's it, thank you very much for watching, I hope the video was useful to you. My conclusion about these amp sims, and to be honest, my conclusion is not really that important. What's important about a video like this is that you get a chance to have a listen and make your own mind up, decide whether to make a purchase. But for what it's worth, my opinion is that both amp sims are fantastic, they're both incredibly well done, they both sound very much like the originals except for they have a lot more scope than the original preamps. I think that the MP1 has the edge when it comes to clean sounds, the JMP is a little darker sounding. I think it also has the edge when it comes to those 80s, real choppy cut through the mix type sounds, which I love. The JMP though, those long, warm, high gain, sustained solo notes really does have the edge. And it also excels if you're wanting to push a harsher element in your sound. But what did you think? Did you like the sounds? Will you be making a purchase? Did you buy one of these apps or plugins already? What do you think to them? Do you love the Nimbrini stuff? I do. Let's talk about guitar gear and bass gear in the comments below. Tell me what you're using, tell me what you're playing. I could talk to you about that stuff all day. Down below this video you'll find all the links where you can help out the channel, check out my merch, website, Patreon, all of that, you know, typical YouTuber boring type stuff. And until next time, make lots of music, take care of yourselves, be good, be kind to the planet, and don't piss your pants about. See you later.